Hi friends, I am Dr. Pinaki De from Kolkata. I am a consultant physician working at ILS Hospitals Dhamma. Today we will uh, go through the latest updates in hypertension in a very short form. As we all know, as per WHO, nearly 63% of total deaths in India are due to non-communicable diseases, of which 27% are attributed to cardiovascular disease, which affects 45% people in the 40 to 69 years age group and raised blood pressure is among the most important risk factors for cardiovascular deaths. Moreover, it remains poorly controlled due to low awareness about hypertensives, lack of appropriate care through primary care and poor follow-up. In India, the prevalence has also gone up over 30 years to 38% in men and 32% in women from 29% and 28% respectively in the last three decades. Despite that, nearly half of the people or 51% of the men and 41% of women with hypertension were unaware of the condition. Additionally, over 62% of the men and more than 53% of the women living with hypertension did not get treatment. Medication was used to control blood pressure in fewer than 20% of men and fewer than 25% of women with hypertension worldwide. That is a study published by WHO in Lancet 2021. Really astonishing. International Society of Hypertension has released the ISH 2020 Global Hypertension Practice Guidelines. The inclusion of optimal and essential treatment paradigms attempts to address the issue in the resource poor settings like our country. Optimal care refers to evidence-based standard of care and whereas essential standards refers to minimum standard of care to allow specification of essential standards of care for low resource settings. The American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology has released a scientific statement in 2021 offering new guidance for management of stage 1 hypertension among patients with low atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. Among low-risk adults, that is, there is no ASCBD pre-existing or low 10 years of CBD risk below 10%. With stage 1 hypertension, that is blood pressure 130 to 139 by 80 to 89 millimeter of mercury, management starts with non-pharmacological therapy. If blood pressure remains uncontrolled, after three to six months, consider starting pharmacological therapy only. That is according to the study published in Hypertension 2021. Lowering systolic blood pressure targets down to 110 mm of mercury to less than 130 mm of mercury range substantially reduced cardiovascular adverse events in the state randomized trial affirming the sprint findings for an older Chinese population. Among some 8,500 patients ages 60 to 80 in China, the intensive target trimmed 26% of the composite CV risk. Finding from now a second major trial supporting a lower target could unite the guidelines, which even among US professional societies range from thresholds of 130 to 150 millimeter of market. That means the lower we can make the systolic blood pressure, the greater the benefit we are getting from the treatment of hypertension. With regard to prognostic value of ambulatory blood pressure monitoring and nighttime blood pressure monitoring, the 2018 European guidelines on the management of arterial hypertension recommend that the diagnosis of hypertension should not only be dependent on office BP measurements, that is in front of hospital uh, doctor or nurse nursing staff, but also on out of office measurements. That is by ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home blood pressure monitoring. 24 hour and nighttime blood pressure measurements were associated with greater risks of mortality and the composite of CV outcome. Thus, they may be considered as the most relevant measurements for estimating cardiovascular risk. For even 20, the systolic blood pressure by 10 millimeter diastolic blood pressure 
increment of blood pressure measured at night, the risk of mortality increased by 23%, nearly by one fourth, and the risk of cardiovascular events by 36%. So, nighttime blood pressure must be assessed and should be targeted as well. Most patients with hypertension require lifelong medical therapy to achieve optimal blood pressure control. The 2018 European guideline equally recommend five classes of antihypertensive drugs. Considering high non-adherence treatment, the importance of combination treatment is particularly highlighted to improve adherence to therapy and blood pressure control. Therefore, the 2018 European guidelines recommend, especially in the context of lower blood pressure targets, to start antihypertensive therapy with an initial dual fixed dose combination of either AC inhibitor or ARB plus either calcium channel blocker or diabetic. Since early July 2018, products containing valsartan have been recalled worldwide. The reason is, in, is the detection of a known carcinogen, namely NDMA, which can be found in candesartan, arbesartan, losartan, ulmesartan, and valsartan as well. And NDMA has been classified by the WHO International Agency for Research on Cancer to be carcinogenic in humans clearly. If one lakh patients would have received NDMA contaminated valsartan from the originator every day for six years in the highest dose, it could result in 22 additional liver cancers over the lifetime of these patients. The presence of NDMA in these drugs could lead to eight additional cancer cases in one lakh patients if they had taken the highest daily dose over four years. But what happens actually, Valsartan recall accompanied by a significant increase in the rate of emergency department visits by more than 6%. The Hygia study represents the largest study that tested nighttime antihypertensive treatment being given. In this trial, chronotherapy was associated with a significant reduction in endpoints, including death. The Hygia chronotherapy trial tested whether nighttime therapy in comparison to usual upon awakening hypertensive therapy, exerts a favorable CV risk reduction. The largest study included a total of 19,084 hypertensive patients during an average follow-up of 6.3 years. 1,752 participants experienced a primary CV outcome. An ambulatory blood pressure measurement was performed for 48 hours to collect data on how blood pressure differing sleep. Relative risk reduction for CV events was significantly improved for nighttime treatment when compared with awakening treatment. That means, now to conclude, hypertension is a very common medical condition which we, every one of us face. Most of them are unaware about them and a big chunk of them are not being treated properly and we must treat them to reach our target of saving the mankind. And the most in most cases, combination antihypertensive drugs will give better result. And probably the drugs for hypertension control should better be given during bedtime. Thank you.